Now do you remember who you are, what you were meant to do? I cheated death thanks to you. And thanks to you, I've left my mark. You have too. You've written your own history. You're your own man. I'm Big Boss. And you are too. No. He's the two of us together. Where we are today, we built it. This story, this legend, it's ours. We can change the world and with it the future. I am you, and you are me. Carry that with you wherever you go. Thank you, my friend. From here on out, you're a big boss. When I first thought of the idea for this video, it was something completely different. The original video was going to be about how the Kojima and Konami Fallout caused two great games to go unfinished, PT and Metal Gear Solid V. I knew for sure PT was cancelled because of this, but as I started research for Metal Gear Solid, I realized something. People were saying the game was actually finished, and that I was tweaking for saying that it wasn't. And after looking into it myself, I'm a little torn. It's no secret that Hideo Kojima's separation from Konami was a huge loss for gaming. With him heading one of the greatest horror games on the verge of release, and being the revolutionary head producer for nearly every single Metal Gear Solid game, it's no secret that people were upset over the situation. The reason Kojima was let go from the company was never clearly announced, but a composer he'd worked with would go on to state that it was due to the big spending habits he had trying to make every game perfect. Composer and singer Rika Mor... Mor... <laughs> Moranica? Her name is Rika um, Anyways, she recalls him paying her to write many songs that were turned down time and time again. He also had a habit of pushing back release dates, and so theoretically due to him spending more and more on game production and continuously pushing dates back further, Konami would split ties with Kojima. Before he left the company for good however, he created one more masterpiece for his fans to dwell on. Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain The game was announced on August 30th, 2012 at a private function celebrating the 25th Metal Gear anniversary, originally under the name Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes, which would end up being announced as a prelude to the story of the real game. A couple days later, at 2012 Penny Arcade Expo, it would be revealed to the public. The original reveal for this game had a couple reasons, first being obviously to get the public ready and excited for the next Metal Gear installment, but the second reason was to assess the public's response to the new gaming engine that Konami had just created, since it was only the second game to use Fox Engine after Pro Evolution Soccer 2014. The development for this game was about as rocky as Kojima's relationship with Konami. For starters, Konami wanted to create their own engine for the game to run on, and thus the Fox Engine was born. The goal of the Fox Engine was to create the best gaming engine in the world, and they hoped it would allow them to release games much quicker and on multiple platforms. However, they wanted it to be usable for other games outside of the third person shooter genre, since they were also using it on the Soccer Pro Evolution series. This decision caused a little bit of strain on the optimization for Phantom Pain, and this decision is pretty funny to me since looking at the list of games made with the Fox Engine, it's literally all soccer games, then like PT and Metal Gear, and then back to soccer games. This wasn't the only problem with development though, since allegedly Konami was forcing the game to be developed on last gen consoles, which severely limited the game's full potential since it had to release on the Xbox 360 and the PS3 as well. Allegedly the game was supposed to have a lot more to do in the open world, and full scale wars between mother base soldiers and enemy soldiers were going to be playable. The mother base itself would also be a lot more customizable and shorter since the longer bridges were made to allow the slower consoles to load other parts of the game during the time it took to get to the next area. And just overall lower in quality which could even be seen with some textures looking strange even on maximum PC settings. But take that part with a grain of salt since I've only heard other people complain about it I personally did not have those problems. Having to develop including the last gen consoles was so problematic though that Kojima went to executives at Konami three times to ask them not to release it on last gen consoles, to which they said no every single time. Despite all of the problems that arose during development however, the long awaited fit- Bro, what is my- my dog is tweaking. The long awaited fifth installment of Metal Gear would release completely finished on September 1st, 2015. Or so, that's what people thought anyways. To give you some context for my next points, I'm going to briefly summarize the story. 
Basically, a military group named Cypher attacks the mother base in Ground Zero. Diamond Dogs don't really like that, so they start tracking down the people responsible. Before we find them, however, we find and capture a child soldier named Eli, who is leading a group of soldiers and is believed to be a clone of Snake. Eventually, we find out that it was a rogue part of Cypher named XOF that led the attack on Mother Base, and their leader is Skullface. Skullface wants to kill Americans by making a parasite that infects English-speaking people, but he also wants to use the newest Metal Gear, the Sahelanthropus, as a nuclear deterrent, since he believes killing Americans and nuclear deterrents are the key to world peace. Or something like that. Anyways, long story short, he uses the power of the third child, who is more than likely definitely that guy that was reading your memory card. I can see into your mind. So, you like <laughs> to operate the Metal Gear. He goes to test the Metal Gear, and for some reason, the third child uses it to fatally wound Black Skull. But we're good guys, so we don't kill. Revenge! Uh. Well, never mind, I guess. After this, Snake defeats the Sahelanthropus and brings it back to Mother Base. We later find out that the third child responds to the will of the most vengeful person nearby, so it was likely operating off the will of Eli. It also does some stuff to help him, including taking the Sahelanthropus from Diamond Dogs and giving it to Eli, and it gives him an English vocal parasite that infects people he talks to. I'm skipping over a bunch of Probably important information about the story, but just to emphasize the point I'm about to bring up, I just figured I should get that out of the way. So there are a few reasons why people say the game is finished. The first argument, and probably the most reasonable, is that would it really be a Metal Gear game without cut content? Almost every single Metal Gear game has had a substantial amount of content cut to either fit the tone of the game or the pace of the combat. For example, the Meteorachi Kodak being cut from the first Metal Gear Solid. This was a Kodak entry that would give you information about enemy soldiers, but only if you let him sing a song first. I'm not too sure why this was cut from Metal Gear Solid, but if I had to guess, it was just a little too silly. That's just one example of cut content for Metal Gear games. I could talk about a few more, but if you really are interested, there's probably like hours worth of videos on YouTube explaining all of the stuff that's been cut from those games. But something that was cut from Metal Gear Solid Phantom Pain was the Battle Gear, which was a sort of mini Metal Gear that you would use to fight the Sahelanthropus later in the game. But Kojima said it didn't fit the pacing of the combat, so it was cut. But either way, it's safe to say that cut content is nothing new for these games. Another argument for the game not being finished is based on its second half. The second chapter of this game is significantly slower than the first. You're basically replaying the same missions you've already done and being slow fed information about the main story. I personally did not really like this format at all, but apparently it wasn't as half-baked as I thought, and it was done intentionally to make the game more like Peace Walker. And I've heard a lot less of these are required than people think, but I just did them all since they're on the same page and I probably got confused. The third reason I've seen people complain about is a cut third chapter called Peace. This chapter would have probably just been endgame content however since um, knowing what Kojima's done with games later like Death Stranding, having a last chapter serving as a prologue to the ending where you basically just go before you finish the game and it's like oh Sam forgot to fucking give his neighbor groceries and you basically just doing side missions that you missed out on. So I think it's safe to say that this third chapter was more likely just stuff you could do anyways and since you can still do this stuff after you beat the game I would just say it's cut minimal content. It's, it's useless. The biggest flaw for me personally though would be cut mission 51 Kingdom of the Flies. Although it was cut People who purchased the collector's disc would be able to see how the mission would have unfolded. In 1954, British author William Golding would have released the book Lord of the Flies, a novel about a group of young men surviving alone on the island, with one boy taking the role of the leader. This mission was clearly inspired by the novel. In the mission, Eli, the young man believed to be a snake clone, would camp out on an island with the Metal Gear he stole and the child soldiers that went with him. The Diamond Dogs would eventually track Eli down, and a battle with Eli and the Sahelanthropus and Snake in the Battle Gear would ensue. After the Sahelanthropus is destroyed, a group of Cypher soldiers arrives ready to kill Eli. Snake intervenes and attempts to kill the soldiers, but in a state of disarray, hits Eli instead. The Diamond Dogs eventually arrive to clean up the mess of this battle, where they realize Eli is actually alive since he was wearing a bulletproof vest. And it's here that Eli reveals his intentions to kill Big Boss and Cypher, since Big Boss is his father and he just presents his dad. He just has daddy issues, basically. And it's important to note here that Venom Snake, the character you play as, at this moment he thinks he is Big Boss. I know that sounds weird if you haven't played the game or don't know anything about Metal Gear, but I'll elaborate in a second. 
Anyways, when he's done yapping, Venom Snake orders him to be patched up in Mother Base, but right before taking off on the island, they discover that Eli is in fact infected with the parasites, and they leave him on the island to be burned by the Napalm Strike in order to completely get rid of the parasites from the island. As Snake leaves Eli, he gives him a gun with one bullet in it. Eli turns the pistol on himself, and right before pulling the trigger, the third child who helped him earlier stops him and removes his parasites. The third child then levitates them safely off the island, and this is the end of the cut mission. There's a lot of debate about whether or not this mission being absent makes the game incomplete, but if you asked me, I would say it does for certain. There's so many interesting things to think about outside of just labeling it a subplot and writing it off. This mission literally gives you the backstory for the very first Metal Gear Solid villain, because spoiler alert, Eli is Liquid Snake. His fight plays out similarly to Liquid's final fight and everything on the Solanthropus, and the Solanthropus is actually an earlier version of the Metal Gear from the first game. It's 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 perfect, but it was just cut. It's cut content, guys. It's just a side mission, guys. And some people think that the game is incomplete because that should have been the final mission, but I don't even think that's the case either. The ending where Venom Snake realizes he isn't and never was Big Boss still hits heavy and is a perfect ending to the game, but it's significantly less impactful when he's never had to confront the idea of not being himself. In the mission with Eli, he's forced to confront a direct copy of himself making him question who he is and probably facing the reality of what it's like to be a clone through Eli's perspective. When you get to the end after this mission, Venom Snake realizes he was used exactly how Eli was, just a pawn for Big Boss's bigger objective. But instead of rebelling and hating what made him, Venom Snake chooses to follow the mission for what he believes is the greater good. It's kind of crazy to me without the context of like cloning being a possibility. You just are like, oh shit, I'm... <laughs> Oh, I'm not really me? Okay, well, it is what it is. Like, at least when he confronts Eli and knows for certain that he is his clone, or at least a clone like him, it it puts him di in direct contrast with someone exactly like him. So when he finds out that he's a clone, it's like, oh shit, like, we're not so different after all. And in my opinion, it makes his decision to stay as Big Boss and lead the Mother Base, it makes that way more impactful since he knows who he is. He knows he's not the real Big Boss, but he's continuing to do it anyways whereas Eli figured out who he was and rebelled against it it just adds such a different perspective to the ending I think it's crazy that it was cut and it was actually most likely cut because of time constraints and budgeting and what have you I'm not gonna talk about all of the Metal Gear lore in this video since it could easily wind up being hours long but this theme of Big Boss controlling and using people like they're nothing more than pieces on a chessboard plays heavily in this game specifically you're quite literally playing as someone he created to act like him while he left to go practically warmonger somewhere else. Having two people who are direct results of this manipulation pitted against each other would have been a great finish to the series, especially since it's the last game. Seeing Eli leave the island to do whatever leads to the events of Metal Gear Solid 1 would have been a great exit for the character, and a great way to wrap up the story for the final game of the series. In conclusion, I don't think I can justify saying that this game is finished. To me, it's too big of an issue to have the whole first half of the game be about this big badass Metal Gear, only for a child to steal it and have it be completely forgotten by the second half of the game. And although you could say Eli is a side character, his role in future games alongside a third child, who is definitely fucking Psycho Mantis, make him feel like a way more important character. And honestly, even more importantly, how do you just forget about the fucking Metal Gear? Like, we just let it get away? It's inexcusable to me, especially since you know what these things are capable of, and we always try to stop them in every single game. But in this one, a fucking angsty 12-year-old steals it, and we're like, oh, okay, what can I, I guess we gotta let him have it. Like, what? Overall, I'd say I had a lot of issues with the story, but it still remains in my top 10 favorite games, solely based on gameplay. And even though it doesn't feel complete, I still like the story that is there. Anyways, that's all for Metal Gear Talk, but if you made it this far, I just want to say thank you for watching, and you should let me know how you feel about Metal Gear Solid 5 in the comments. And I will say that I've only played Metal Gear Solid 2, and 2, 3, and 5, and everything else I've only really read about, so if I made any errors about the lore, or just anything, let me know in the comments. And with that being said, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, I'll see you in the next one. And I'm actually currently playing through Peace Walker right now, so if you guys want to see a video on that, let me know. Um, sorry the videos are coming up so slow, I'm just trying to really take my time with these, make them as good as I can. But, um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. And what exactly are you going to do? Drool over pictures of voluptuous girls?